Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast which we disassemble a film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe in one-minute segments and then examine it in obsessive and occasionally hilarious detail. I'm Kyle Olson from the Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco. And Kyle. Yes, sir. You know, we love talking about the art of filmmaking. That's obviously one of our big interests. True. We, we love uh, just seeing how things are made and, and examining them and then reading about, you know, what how artists and cinematographers and everyone, like, goes through trial and error to get the right shot. Um, there is a phenomenal YouTube channel uh, called The Film Riot, where mm. they go into some great explanations of some of these different things. And, and one of the big things that people probably know about is there's a whole bunch of different ways you can move the camera. So we've talked about, I think, in season two, we did a big thing uh, uh, in The Incredible Hulk about the uh, dolly zoom. Yeah. So that's a, uh, a, a camera technique that was made popular um in a variety of different films, the one most people know about is Vertigo, an Alfred Hitchcock film, uh, where basically you're doing you're, you're doing a dolly, which a dolly is basically like a track or some sort of uh, tripod for the for the camera that's on wheels. You're moving it, pushing it in, or pulling it out while you're doing the zooming of the opposite effect. So basically, you get this effect of the person in the foreground staying in one spot and then their background stretching or compressing. Uh, it's used in Jaws. I think there's a bunch of other movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's some things that are different about this. There's the dolly. So you, dollies can pull, push, or they can track. Mm-hmm. You know, they can track a shot. And we've seen that earlier in this film. Uh, the scene where uh, uh, Ivan Vanko is walking across the, the racetrack. That's where we've got a nice uh, dolly tracking shot. Yep. And then zoom, you have magnification bringing things closer in. The reason why I bring all this up is that it's interesting in that these aren't just technical aspects of movie making. There's a storytelling part to these. Yeah. So if you were going to do a dolly, like, you know, you could, you could do the same thing. You want to get closer to some part of the scene. If you used a dolly, that is certainly more character, character driven. And the reason why I say it's more character driven is that the dolly as it's moving is kind of you. Let's say you were as a person walking into a, into a room or walking through a scene. Whereas if you do a zoom, that is much more environment driven in that you're as you're zooming in, the perspective is the same. The dis, you know what I mean? Like the understanding of the perception is the same. What's happening is, is that the entire area around you is closing in. So there's a very different storytelling approach to using those two things. Why, why do I bring all this up? <laughs> well, because this minute, the majority of this, well, half this minute, mm-hmm. if not a little bit more, is just one big yep. zoom pan. I don't, you know, I mean, it's probably a couple of different things. It could be on a crane. Yeah. It could be a lot of different things. Digital, I'm sure, augmented and everything else. And I was looking at like, what are the, what's the longest one of these ever in a movie? Mm. And I know there's a bunch of different, obviously, you, anyone can think of their own scene that they probably are familiar with. There's actually a movie from 1975 called The Passenger. It's an Italian neo-noir art film. Um, it's directed by uh, Michelangelo Anton- Antonioni. It stars Jack Nicholson. It has like a four-minute slow pan zoom that, I mean, when you you just cannot get over how long it is <laughs> because it basically goes through the bars of a room into uh, an outdoor courtyard and then takes a turn. And again, I mean, it's just incredible. Like, you use these sort of shots Again, what is the story you're trying to tell? There's a big story here we're trying to tell in this minute. That's right. Because here we are at minute 60. We have hit the one hour mark of Iron Man 2 from 2010, directed by John Favreau. Um, and so we, uh, we're coming in where we left off, which is uh, in, in the middle of a fight. But uh, as you're talking about the, the big shot, the, the thing that occurred to me uh, was the, the longest shot I know of uh, that I've heard of that I've never actually watched. Uh, there is a film called Russian Ark. Uh, it's yes. a Russian oh, film. And yes. It is an 87 minute single shot. Single shot. So almost like an, a, almost an hour and a half continuous. Now, I think that they did some backstage editing, but like, you know, yes. so like they, they didn't actually shoot the whole thing because it's, it's a full, like, there's battles and everything, all this stuff going on in it. Um, but they, they made it so it looked like it was one continuous shot. So there are no cuts. Uh, that are that are visual to the eye, uh, but yeah, it made me think of that too because this is yeah this, we're coming up on a, on a long long shot uh, well, in this one too. 
and, and and like okay for anybody who's seen a recent war film 1917 yes true that's using a lot of, of movie magic to make it look like yep. what that is a continuous shot the, the reason why i brought up the passenger is is that it's you know it's it's in terms of what we're going to talk about in this scene is it's just this one focal point stays within the shot the entire you know the entire zoom yeah um whereas you know obviously cameras can pan and tilt and go around and the whole the whole context of what you're seeing in the screen changes within a one shot yeah you just you rarely see such a slow focus on one particular part of the scene and it doesn't change that's and, true uh, that's what we got here yeah so before we get into any in-depth discussion about the, this whole scene, which I want to. Uh, there is someone who's missing from this scene, who has been missing from this whole party and is conspicuous by their absence. Rob, where the hell is Jarvis? Oh, wait. Last time we saw Jarvis, like he was uh, in just talking to him about the stuff with Anton Vanko and all that kind of stuff. Where the hell is he? Well, he's in the work. Like, he's if he's not in the one suit... He'd be in the other suit. Also, he runs the house. Where the hell is Jarvis? Oh, what? Can, I, I've been thinking about this whole time. Like, he's the one, he's the operator of the house. He was there in the first movie. Like, when he wakes up, Jarvis is there in the house. Like, okay, so hold on. If, if he's not running the suit, he's running the house. And so he's just not there for all this stuff. So he just... Shut him yes. down for the party? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Like, he's so embarrassed about what's about to happen at this party. They're just like, oh. Jarvis, you don't even want to see no, this. No, no, no. No, it's not that. Stop recording. It's, it's Well, no, here's the deal. He knows. Wow. That, wait, that's an amazing catch because, yeah, no kidding. Where is he? But yeah. I honestly think this is a, I'm going to do whatever I want with whoever I want to do it with. And guess who I don't want to be my voice of reason in my head? <laughs> Jarvis, <laughs> you're off for the night. And you know what? I don't think we've ever really seen this, but I would assume there is a way for him to turn him off. Well, we have seen that in this movie. Right. Like uh, when when uh, it was Rhodey was coming into the room. Right. Oh, no, it was Pepper. When Pepper was coming into the room, he was like, eh, shut off. Like before well, he, and I mean, I would assume that that's, to tell her that's to... like there is a way to fully mute him, for lack of a better term. Yeah. That's what I would say. That's what happened. Even though, boy, I'll tell you what, it would be cool if they actually acknowledge that like yeah that i mean that seems like what you just said seems like a scene that should have been in between tony getting the makeup and the watch yes. and before the party starts before like before he puts the suit no, on actually the, jervis delete all no, no. you know like when he and you know where you put it when he's in the chair natasha has uh -huh. just applied his makeup and they've had their weird conversation she's walked yeah. away you have him sitting there watching her walk out of the room, and you have him uh -huh. go, hey, Jarvis, take the night off. <laughs> yes. And that's it. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's it. But not having it there is weird. Oh, well, no. When like, you not having it in the movie is weird because he should be involved in some well, of this. Well, or the only other thing you could say is, is that it, it would have been interesting to have Jarvis. Now, here's another way to approach to it. Or working on something. Well, he's working on something or... When he starts to lose it in front of everybody with blowing yeah. up the bottles, Jarvis comes yeah. in and says, sir, uh, sir you're, you're yeah. putting people at risk, and this is wrong. No, stop, Jarvis. Shoots another one. Yeah. No, sir, I have to strongly tell you that you're putting people at risk yeah. and property. That's it, Jarvis, Jarvis you're off. Jarvis, kill Exactly. Yeah. And then, and then it shows his further... Sir, I do, yeah. do, do, do. Oh, well, that would be sad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. Well, later on, Jarvis gets murdered. There's a, or at least well, apparently I mean, murdered. So. Pretty much. Um, <laughs> oh, that is really crazy. Yeah, because well, because right? you've got to explain why why all of this carnage is allowed to happen. Because technically yeah. it shouldn't be. I mean. Right. Oh boy. Yeah, you'd think yeah. more of Jarvis. Well, because I mean, it's not like it's not like the house is ever gonna get blown up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are the odds? What are the odds? Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, but meanwhile, there's there's still action happening now. Oh, yeah, there's action. Uh, because uh, Tony and Rhodey are are facing off. They both have their arms up. Their repulsors are charged. Uh, they're both ready for the other one to blink, and neither one is blinking. Uh, and so Tony finally says, take it, and they both fire their repulsors at each other uh, with deadly intent, I would say. And 
somehow the blasts meet perfectly in the middle uh, and cause a feedback loop and explode. Uh, and so somewhere in Southern California, a contractor has just woken up and he's drooling. <laughs> <laughs> what, what Somehow, I, I, a boat. I, I just bought a boat. I don't know how, but <laughs> someone's going to need some fixing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then uh, we see like the explosion like go out like from inside the house, and then it's sort of like almost like a disc in between them. Uh, it sort of goes out uh, straight out, blows out the windows. We see we get to the shot of the house and other, and it shows we still don't understand the geography of this. No, house. we don't at all. <laughs> Look at it, when the explosion came out, I'm like, oh, that's where they, oh, what? So, no. does someone, please, if someone out there has, like, the blueprints of, like, what the house is supposed to be like, because, look, I played Lego Marvel superheroes, and I, or I say Lego Marvel Avengers, and I've been to Tony Stark's house, and it doesn't look like this at all, even though it, all the things there. I don't understand the layout of this house at all. Uh, so if someone has like has gone in, like maybe someone in Unity has like programmed the house where you can walk around and see stuff. I would love to see something like that because I don't get it. Yeah, there's problems, <laughs> and, I, and I'm just gonna tell you. And I love it. You know, for everybody who listens knows we are. Although we've studied this film and we take our notes and we do our research, yeah. we also try to keep ourselves fresh because we want you to have the experience of minute by minute. Right. So. Yeah, like in this last three minutes, we, Turns out. We're, we're like, what is going on with yeah. those? Um, here's, here's the problem. So I was convinced that this kitchen is on the back seaside part of the house. Yes. That you would come in through the main well. entrance, which yep. the entrance is right on we the know inside. That. The, we know that, right. like that, that where that faces because we've had a bunch of scenes in the, in the right. front of the house. Now, here's the problem. So we go from, which by the way, the shot where they... Their beams meet. It is an absolutely beautifully rendered shot. Yeah. Clearly, a lot of effects are going on here. They've got the set r realized perfectly. The lighting as it, it fills the space is amazing. The actual point of combustion between the two where everything gets blown out, it's beautifully done. I mean, if you go through this frame by frame, wonderful art was and time was taken in, in making this, uh, this scene realized. Um, and then you know, obviously see the glass explode. When that happens... We cut to a semi outside of the house shot, mm -hmm. and and we see you know there's an outdoor fire pit, there's tables, and there's one huge table tabletop that goes flying. But mm -hmm. here's the here's the problem: we see that this is a balcony, and we see that there are palm trees right next to it. And clearly, this is not at the base of the palm trees. The palm trees go farther down to a first floor of the room. Of the, I'm sorry, of the house. Yeah, that conflicts what we see with the high exterior part of the shot of the house, where it now looks like this room is the room facing inland where the cars came in. I'm confused. Yeah, I mean, I guess the explosion wouldn't just go out one way. It's like if it's a if it's like a flat disc, you know, like time, um, it would go out on both sides. Um, <laughs> but I don't get it because okay, so. Uh, let's do. I'm going to use some like out of game knowledge here too. But in Iron Man three, the house gets attacked, and Tony is standing, but kind of where the statue is, and looking yes. out the window when the missiles come in, and where the piano, you know, like like the that happens right there. So we know that is like on the cliff, like on the edge. Right. So for this to be on the other side, it'd have to be under it because we also know from that movie or like or actually from the first movie too you go into the main doors you walk in straight to this there are no steps i mean there may be like right. a step i think it's like a step down but not like another floor like you could basically from the front door you can kind of look out at the ocean right right so where the hell is the kitchen yeah it is a little this is a little weird. Yeah. And I wouldn't imagine, and I honestly couldn't imagine just if you think of, I guess, maybe one of the reasons why I certainly am having difficulties with this is, I would think the kitchen would face the water. Yes. Like, it, it because, could be like there's a big dining room type area in the fireplace. Yes. That would make sense. Like, why would you want to have it face your yard? Right? And I mean, even when people, like the front door is going to be inland because that's where cars come in and you want to have people walk through the house and then be blown away by this incredible view of the sea. Yeah. And I'm I trying to, I'm understand. racking my brain now to think of, of the times that we spent, because I think we only go to Tony's house in the three Iron Man movies. 
I don't I don't think in the Avengers he's living in the tower and you know no in, right right and uh, so in, in, in Age of Ultron he's living in the tower as well like I don't remember seeing it in any other movie I don't remember ever having a scene in the kitchen besides this oh right like yeah, there's no scene of it. him like drinking orange juice and like good morning Pepper just mm-hmm. reading the you hey. know we there's clearly stuff we're gonna yeah. I'm sure we're gonna hear about it oh but I'm sure it, it, it's interesting because it is I think this is a little bit of confusing and I wouldn't even call it a continuity error I just think no. it's nobody you know I, look at I give him fa- credit it's an entirely fabricated house I mean like exactly this doesn't right. exist anywhere exactly uh, I don't right. know if there's a fully CG version of it but they just built what they needed exactly now um, one of the things I do love is, as you know, we love our movie geography. Yeah. I do love, though, the the attempt at showing the real outside shot, the wide shot of the house. And good and bad thing on this. Uh, bad thing is, is that the the dust cloud that gets or the exhaust of the explosion not rendered greatly. It looks a little animated. But I do love the fact that as this happens, you see the lights and the power on the other side of the house flicker yeah. as a result of the explosion. Yeah. And again, I, I really like the way that that's done. That's yeah. just overall, I think that looks cool. But here's the other problem. So where did all the people go? Yeah. <laughs> right? Because it's still an explosion. And, they, and it, only, it was literally a minute ago that this started. I, okay. you can't, even when you're especially in your party thing and you're at somebody else's house and you're in the dark. You can't run that fa- far well, in a though, minute. And did you remember? You remember earlier in the movie, you know, earlier in the scene, where we sh- saw a exterior shot like this showing the taillights of all the cars going to the house. Yeah, they're all gone now, right? Because they, they're not in, they're not parked in the garage. <laughs> so like they basically got a you know, probably like an, an orange grove or something that they paid to have the, and the all valleys. Right. Yeah, the valleys exactly. are exactly frantically you know running around. Which Range Rover is it? I don't yeah, know. Beep, beep, I, beep, 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 beep. No, it's yeah. There's a little bit of uh, trickery here, but yeah, mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we we come to the the aftermath of the the explosion, um, and so this is where the 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 shot happens, the push in. Like say, right. we, try, we try to figure it out. I, I I'm guessing it's a crane just because of how much distance they cover. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it seems because for in, in like it's it takes I think a would you say a full 26 seconds of just. It's- the camera is slowly of, moving. Yes. In no, I mean this from this outside, is literally like, almost, on the porch. Yes. Through like you see the flickering lights, like, like the blue and the yellow lights are really nice. The couple of them are flickering, and there's right. fires burning and stuff too. And like Tony is laid out. We have no, we have no idea where Rhodey is, uh, and it just slowly pushes in until we actually get to Iron Man prone out. Like, you know, next to the fireplace, essentially, you know, crumbled. And then as we approach him and get really close, then his eye, like the, the, the arc reactors already illuminated, but then have his eyes light up. And we hear sort of like the power on sort of sound. The, uh, and then he sort of like wakes up a little bit. He doesn't sit up. He just sort of like wakes up and moves his head a little bit like, what just happened? Like, if he wasn't sober before, right. he sure is now. He's sober now. <laughs> And I and going back to the whole point of why we talked about the difference between zoom and dolly slash crane shots is yeah. it's important for the camera to move because here's the difference. Had you done this scene with just a push a zoom, the feeling would have been is just, oh, look at look at pathetic Tony. Uh-huh. Whereas because using the dolly, I think what the scene now shows is the camera is sort of the concerned friend. Yeah, who's going in to see if their friend is okay? Agreed, because I, I think if they had cut right to uh, Tony and then like like laying right. there, even for like two seconds, and then and, and lights of it, you're like, oh, it's on now. Like you'd think the fight's going to continue, but by by taking the time and stopping and then doing the slow push, you're like, okay, this is aftermath. Like, well, it's over. It's happened. Like. Oh God! Now what? Like it's not going to be round two now. Like the fight's done. Well, it's done. Well, can I can I blow your mind? Sure. I think what we're seeing is the view of Tony from Rhodey. Oh, interesting. I think Rhodey may have been blown off the 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 house. And he's coming back in. And I think it's it's subtle and it's artistic because they didn't put the heads up display or anything. Yeah. You're seeing that slow push in where he's coming in. Is my friend OK? Yeah. And then just starts to walk back because because what do we do? As soon as we see that Tony's woken up, he looks back 
Rhodey is just, like, walking, back. right, and Rhodey is walking away from him. Yeah. Oh. So I think that's what it is. Is okay. I think the implication is that Rhodey does care. So, but he's like, dude, you're a screw up. Zoom. I'm <laughs> push. Crane. <laughs> dolly. POV. That's a lot of a lot of camera stuff happening in one mm. shot, one long shot. I mean, that's why it took thirty seconds. <laughs> I think this is the longest shot in the movie so far, isn't it? Oh yeah, totally. No, yeah. this because it hangs there. I mean, yeah. which is the point of it? Artistically, yeah. is the point, so. right? Yeah, and so then, uh, and and so, and also, this is the one of the f- first minutes we have that I, I, yeah, this is the first minute we've had of the movie, not counting like titles where things are dark, where no actors appear. I mean, like oh. they're in suits and stuff too. So I'm pretty sure there's mostly CG, or they could be stuntmen, or like we don't see any actors at all. And other than take it, there's no other dialogue. Right. This is it. Yeah. So I mean, it's a full exactly. Minute. So like, yeah. But, so Tony wakes up, looks over, sees Rhodey. Rhodey looks at Tony. Tony looks at Rhodey, and then Rhodey turns and basically launches himself into the sky. Like now, nothing is said. Do you love? And I can't just get over this. We're talking about two inanimate figures. Yes. Toys. And, uh, There's action figures. The, the action figures. No expression. And yet. And yet. The, the way this is filmed, there's emotion. Yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. I know. I don't know if it's just the human personification. Like, you know, just at, you put your own stuff onto something that's blank or what. But, like, it tells a story without using any dialogue or any facial expressions or anything at all. I mean, there's barely any movement of their thing. But you, well, you know exactly what this is. Okay, so a couple theories of why this works. One... I think that is the purpose of the long push in. Mm. Like I think it really does set that. And and there's a reason why there's all this lighting and all this environmental stuff going on because when you when you focused in on on Tony as he's looking at him, you kind of okay, think about this. He's he's slumped down. You know that his 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 head is tilted in like somebody who's like in a bed. Yeah. You have the the shadows of the lighting of the mismatched lighting now that's been, you know, probably broken or something is over him. And he just kind of has that look like, I know what I did. And it was bad. Yeah. Right? There's a little I don't know why it has that vibe of shame. And then when you go to, to Rody, he's just looking at him kind of like, dude. You done messed this up. Yeah. You done messed this up. <laughs> and when he turns, the uh-huh. thing I love. Is Rhodey, you see his shoulders go down. Uh-huh. Like as if he's tensed up looking at him like, dude, I will drop yeah. you again. But okay, I get it. You you are telling me just from your blank stare, which again, yeah. this is ridiculous. You get it. <sighs> I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. And he takes and off. And he goes back into the pose. Yes. The pose we've seen <laughs> before. Like Rhodey's a fast learner, uh, and then rockets off into the sky. And the last, the, la- the minute comes to an end as we see him arcing off into the sky. Um, and that's that's where the minute comes in. Whew. Okay, so big it, moment, big fight, big is a friendship over. Uh, I don't know, but so let's pause, do our own twenty second push in, and reflect on what's just happened here. Okay, so let's go back into this is the the party. Tony is drunk and out of control. Rhodey shows up. Rhodey goes on, puts on the suit. They have their their big fight, uh, and then Rhodey now has left and has taken an Iron Man armor to the military. Yeah. yeah. So, what's really going on here? Because there's no way this should have ever happened or Tony could ever have allowed this to happen because we saw like even when we read in the the guide for uh, the the visual dictionary how many protections he had to make sure no one else could put on the mark 5 armor the the suitcase suit right it's biometrical all this kind of stuff right. on there we've seen the importance of not only the suit but the person who attacked him that started all this stuff on didn't have a suit he had an arc reactor, an arc reactor he used to power the whips and showed that God could bleed. Yeah. And then now the sharks are going around and it happens that Rhodey is one of those sharks. In what way, in what possible universe does Tony Stark have any type of system set up where anyone could walk in and walk out with a suit of armor because it's not just the fact that that Rhodey took the Iron Man armor; 
he took an arc reactor, which we have established in this film is the most dangerous part of the suit, and he let him have it. Or did he? Uh, this is what I don't understand about this this oh. whole scene. Like uh, the retcon people say, this was Tony letting him have it. Like this is his this is his gift to him. This is his he's willing. You know, like he's he's uh, this is all part of uh, Tony Stark's last will and testament. Like this is a way of him giving the suit to them without giving it to them. But the previous fifty nine minutes of this movie have had Tony saying the exact opposite. That no one has this, no one can have it, I won't let you have it. And now I was like, yeah, okay. Since it, since it turns out one other person has this and figured out, now I'll give it to the U.S. military because that's going to go well. You know, okay. So, yeah, okay. T tell me because, like, this scene, once again, it makes no sense to me at all. Now, okay, so I'm going to go a little bit beyond the retcon group on this. Okay. I, I think... Here's the here's the deal. Tony at this stage in the game. And that's and again, that's why there is this 30 second yeah. slow zoom because right. you are it's there. It's also resetting us. It's resetting us as the and audience. it's us like, reflecting oh. on where now where is Tony? Where is yes. his mind? And I think Tony's mind is wow, I'm totally messed up. I have failed. There is no way. Look what I just did. No, this is not working out. And in the back of his head, as which we've clearly sh shown, he is a patriot. He he is a he is a person who wants to help out his country, and he wants to you know obviously fight for good and all that implies. And he says to himself, "Yeah, I've been wrong pretty much on everything. I they there's somebody did have the suit before I said it would, and there's people chomping at the bed, and yes, there are sharks and everything else. And you know what? Here's a way to give the government their suit." And it doesn't come from me. <laughs> so I'm going to save my ego. I'm going to save. I don't have to show up to Stearns or to the military or a general and hand it over. Mm. Here's a way I can do it and still be me. <laughs> okay. And when and that did sense. that? When? Okay. Okay. Uh, establishing when, when that. When did all that fine. thinking happen? When did all that thinking happen? In the 35 seconds that the camera was coming. Oh, is that what you're saying? Like, right then is when he makes the decision. He's like, I'm not yeah. going to stop it. But yeah. because my thing is, where did he get the arc reactor? Well, they're already in the suits. Why in the world would you keep the arc reactor in the suits? Also, we've only established there are two in the whole oh. universe. Oh, no, they're... Well, haven't they always? Well, no. The unit, the 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 chest has always lit up on those in the hall yes, armor. Yes, when he gets in it, because the the arc reactor's in oh, Tony Stark's chest. Because it's his test. Yes. Where did the other arc reactor come from? Uh, because ooh, then this goes it? back to the the this was Tony's plan all along, in that he built a second arc reactor that can power the suit just as well as his because it has the same wattage because. The, the one he's currently using is more powerful than the one that originally charged that suit, and, but yet the repulsors were the same power, so that that would seem to me, transitive property, that it's the same power output. Because also later on, we're going to see the War Machine suit in action going at full strength, which means it has to have the same level of arc reactor that Tony's does. And is it and is it the slim fit arc reactor that right. doesn't have That's to go three inches thing. into your chest? Where does it sit in that suit? Because that suit was never designed to have an exterior one, so it had to have been modified. So I'm not saying that this is why. I'm saying none of this adds up. I'm saying like your theory is great, well, their theory is great. Neither of them make a hundred percent sense. Okay, this is really messy, and I don't get it. We're gonna have to dig out the 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 manuals on. <laughs> yeah, or I was gonna have to track down the uh, um, the uh, novelization and see if they get into the head of Tony Stark. Yeah, Tony Stark then decided that this was the moment that he should let his technology go. The thing that he's spent the last year of his life defending, he should just let the government have it and well, say I, I, everything will be fine. Okay, but but hold on a second. Even with that said, even with everything I just said, yeah. If it, okay, first of all, his ego is still in play. Of course, he doesn't want to be the one that hands over anything. Yes, agreed. Here's the here, wait. Let me. I'll, I'll sweeten the pot. If anyone is going to hand it over to the military, Rhodey is the best choice. Yes, be because because not, not even Pepper. Pepper's not military. Rhodey at least understands him, understands the power, is responsible, and is military. 
so he covers all the bases. True. I mean, so, obviously, Rhodey is his best friend, and he is giving yes. the suit to Rhodey. So, so yes. However, he, he's, he's not training a replacement. He's not finding the next well, Iron Man because he knows he's dying. He's not picking the next Iron Man. He's not picking his successor. He is giving the suit to the military in a way that he can stomach. Yeah. But then why did he do it at the beginning? Like, the why did we have the whole court scene if he's just going to yeah. do this? He's it, stubborn. What, <laughs> he's stubborn. What, what was the point of he's that? Like, that was a long, he's long scene. He's That's, no, can I tell you? I don't. <laughs> he's eccentric. This is who he is. He's ego driven. This is what he is. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I'm more concerned about the arc reactor right now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we can focus on the arc reactor because that's my thing too. Is we have never shown that there's more than one. I mean, there's there's the one that he originally put in his chest. The proof that Tony Stark has a heart, but that is underpowered. And we've seen what happens when you try and do stuff with it. Maybe and that technology cannot be changed because even by when you get to the end of the movie, there are only two arc reactors in the world: one in Tony Stark's chest, and the one that's powering the the Avengers Tower. Maybe, right? Maybe I mean, like, is, maybe, right. if I'm I mean, wrong. Maybe, tell me I'm maybe, wrong. But we've he, never no. seen any other thing him doing because later on in this film, he's going to make another arc, arc reactor, and it's a pain in the butt. Maybe these are just like arc reactor lights that are. <laughs> then where is I mean, it light, getting the I, power? It, no, 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 no. I'm not, not, not like L I G H T L I T E. Oh. <laughs> it's arc reactor light. It's it's mini arc reactor. It's but, the arc reactor mini. But. It's the arc, so so Tony has the arc reactor Pro Max, <laughs> and this is this is the arc reactor mini. That we just use when we just need like some power to do some stuff. Yeah, except. We know they can't improve that technology because no one can understand it. There's only two men in the world who can understand arc technology. One of them is uh, uh, making drones right now, and the other one is uh, you know lying next to a, a broken fireplace. Um, so later on in this film, we're going to see war machine armor functioning at full capacity, doing almost 90% of what... Tony's new armor does. There are some bells and whistles, some little extra things, which we'll talk about when we get there. But other than that, it does. It flies, it shoots, it does all the things that Tony's armor does, except without all this extra bonus stuff. Okay, and I, no triangles. I, we're gonna do. We're gonna do some expanded homework. We're gonna figure this out. <laughs> I will just say though, outside of the arc reactor, I'm okay with with everything else. And I and I think it makes. I actually do think it makes sense, and it's still within the character. I, I understand the story. I mean, I understand the story wise thing of, of passing it along, but then it, it this always annoys me when you take all this time to establish this thing and then go, nah. You it's know, like, but but wait a minute. We're an hour into this movie, and right. I got to say, I was I was waiting to do this. We're an hour in. You got to admit that. Uh, come on, you feel better about this movie than you did when you started. <laughs> Do I? Do you <laughs> do? <laughs> your rating, wouldn't your rating for this movie be a little bit better than what it was before? Uh, at, at the hour mark, I don't think I'm ready to make that determination because there are, there are mm. things that I, I recognize a lot of the quality. Like I recognize, you know, like, like the push-in shots and that kind of stuff. I mean, along through that, I was like, that is some, that's some very good filmmaking along the way. But then there's these huge story problems that are still linger that still bother me, and even ten years later, they have never really uh, resolved them in any way, shape, or form. I mean, there's there's stuff in future movies that you go back and you go, oh, that's why that thing happened. But they're, they're, this is the movie that they like. They just sort of like whistle past the graveyard. Like no one like mentions, nobody talks about the stuff that happens in here. Like no one ever brings up Anton Vanko again. Well, well, I mean that's true, but. We still have time. We still we still have more movie. I'm convinced we're going to figure out the answers to this. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm. I'm uh, all right. I, w I you would raised love some to really good points though. <laughs> I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> and if you're enjoying the conversation, you can tell us about it by leaving us a review. That's oh, right. Yes. Whether you're pro or anti Iron Man too, we would like you to, to uh, tell us if you think you are enjoying the conversation that we're having along the way. Uh, Wait, I don't hold on. I don't want to say you're it, here's the deal. You're either pro or less pro Iron Man. Too. You're, you're pro. You're either on Team Tony or Team Hammer. 
I, so okay. you can, there you go. For those of you who don't like to write reviews, here's what you do. You go to, let's say, Apple Podcasts. You find <laughs> our podcast. You give us five stars and you say, yeah. hashtag Team Hammer. And that's it. That's all you need to do. And that's what you do? Yeah, that's it. Like, you don't have what to, if, like, go, I first discovered this while I was looking around what? for the, like, if you get nervous about this stuff, and I understand, I get it, um, that's all you have to do. Hashtag Team Hammer. Do you know what, though? What? I'm afraid there might be people that might put hashtag Team Boyd. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> even better. Hashtag that. Team, and then insert your favorite character here. Oh, there, there you go. Right? And we'll count them at the end, and... That's right, because personally... I don't know what we'll do. <laughs> I'm Team Jack. Uh, yeah. Jack, his yeah. hammer's assistant. Yes, the what? world-class <laughs> chef who makes <laughs> who makes salmon mwah, par excellence, <laughs> and can generate uh, high, high quality security codes too. I mean, what can't Jack do? Can I? I think what? Jack's better on the computer than uh, than Justin Hammer is. If anybody's if anybody's Team Rebecca, <gasps> we're gonna there have you a go. problem. <laughs> I want I want to hear from Team Rebecca. And if, you, and if you feel like you want to write something, then hashtag Team Rebecca because, and then write down because we had two Rebeccas. There's there's an alternate reality Rebecca. There's the Rebecca of the deleted scenes, and there's the Rebecca in the regular scene. Which, Which Rebecca talk, do you love? Yes, right. It's the Rebecca, the one with the watermelon. Yeah, Rebecca was actually the one who was throwing the bottles back in the original oh, scene. Oh, that's right. Like she is yeah. credited in the movie as Rebecca. I don't remember a moment where they actually say her name. Right, but that's what it is. And and Olivia Munn, when she was in the deleted scenes, was also referred to as Rebecca. So they were determined to use the name Rebecca. And they, so must if have, so, if you're yeah. if you're you know bottle service like you've never seen before, so <laughs> hashtag Team Rebecca. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, and of course, all of us are Team DJAM. Yes. I mean, that's just, that just makes sense. Um, yes. But yeah, so if that's, if that's all you want to do, that's fine. Like, I'm, uh, that's, but that, that's great. And the thing about the reviews is, I know it means little to you, possibly, but for us, it helps us not only feel better about ourselves because we both have a giant hole in the side of us that can never be filled enough with compliments, uh, but also it helps other people find the show, too, because if a show is highly regarded, then Apple then says, oh, there's a lot of people who are reviewing the show? Well, then it must be good. Here, have some front page. Oh! Yay! Can you imagine if we got to be on a front page of something? It'd be so exciting. No. I would screenshot it because it wouldn't last long. But that's no. all on you because we can't pay Apple. Lord knows we've tried, uh, but they can't be bribed because they have all the monies. Uh, so <laughs> if you have a moment, review, team, whatever character you want to to, spec, to uh, think on. If you want to write a little bit why, great. If not, just the hashtag team thing is fine. We appreciate it, uh, and uh, we'll do. And and then our wrap up show. If we find out about them, we will do our best to spotlight them and uh, sh give them a shout out too. Yes, we will. I think you can even put them up anonymously. So if you if you're even shy enough that way, which I totally get, you can do it that way too. But uh, we are going to uh, uh, be back to talk about minute sixty one, uh, where uh, Rhodey uh, finishes the stabbing in the back that he has started uh, with Tony uh, by doing exactly the opposite of what Tony always wanted. Uh, so you do not want to miss that. It's Shakespearean levels of awfulness at minute sixty one, and you do not want to miss it. Enough said. Bye. Bye.